the best habits that we could form as far as good habits or the easiest habits to form are daily habits. Daily habits. You see, it's kind of hard to have a habit of, well, I'm going to do this about two or three times a week. You know, it's not really a habit. Habits have to be consistent, right? So the nice thing about a daily habit is that if you do something every day, then it's pretty easy for that to just become automatic, just a daily thing, like, say, brushing your teeth or taking a shower or whatever you do daily. Other habits are weekly habits, like going to church on Sunday, but at least those things happen every Sunday. If you said, well, I'm going to go to church three Sundays a month or something, you know, it'd be pretty easy to get out of that habit because you have Sundays where you're not going to church and then that could confuse the whole thing. But if it's just every Sunday I go to church, every morning I read my Bible, every morning I pray, these are the kind of habits that are actually going to stick. Now, if you would flip over to Luke chapter 9, and while you're turning to Luke chapter 9, I'll read for you from Acts 17, 11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. So here's a group of people that are not only reading the Bible daily, but they're actually paying attention to what they're reading and actually thinking about how the things that they're hearing in their lives are matching up with or not matching up with scripture. They're reading scripture and they're thinking about it, meditating upon it every day, whether the preaching they're hearing is correct and consistent with what they're reading in the Bible each day. Of course, we could go back to the Old Testament and find the scripture where it says that the king of Israel is supposed to read in the book of the law all the days of his life. And so we should be reading our Bible daily. That should be a daily habit. Now, I think the best time to do this is first thing in the morning. Because when we wake up in the morning, it's a brand new day. We want to start it off right. Seek first the kingdom of God. And I think that's the best scenario. But here's the thing. Let's say for whatever reason, you have a hard time with this. Maybe you're not a morning person or whatever. You know, it'd be better to at least stick that Bible reading habit somewhere in your day than to not have it at all. So if you fail to put it first thing in the morning, well, don't just say, well, I give up. Instead, pick another time, okay? Now, for some people, this could be as simple as just when you get in your car to go on your commute, instead of listening to brain-dead talk radio or something, you could actually turn on the audio Bible. I mean, what could be simpler, right? You're in the car five days a week. You've got time. Don't say you're too busy. You're sitting in the car. You're driving to work. Most of us men drive to work at some point. That could just become a habit, of just turning on a few chapters of the Bible, boom, you're getting your Bible reading. Now, some people have asked, hey, is, you know, is listening to the Bible a substitute for reading the Bible? And I would say, yes, it is. Okay. Now, for some people, maybe it's not. Maybe for some people, they have a hard time focusing when it's audio. Personally, I get more out of it when it's audio. I, obviously, I do both. When I'm reading in a foreign language, I'll typically physically read the book. But... You know, when it comes to English Bible, I prefer to listen to it. I get more out of it listening to it. That's just how I am. Now, you might be different, but I wouldn't sit there and say, well, no, I have to physically read it and, and have some kind of a superstition about that or be legalistic about that. Because the important thing is that you're consuming God's word. And blessed is he that heareth and he that readeth, the Bible says in Revelation. So uh, either way, you're going to be blessed by God's word. Obviously, throughout history, a lot of people have even been illiterate and they can still take in the word of God by listening to it, being read out loud. But God wants us all to be literate, of course. And so daily reading your Bible, get in the habit. You know, one Christian told me that it revolutionized his Christian life by just putting the Bible on the back of the toilet and that that just changed his life because he said, for the first time in my life, I'm consistently reading the Bible every day. Because I just have this habit. I go to the bathroom every day. The Bible's there. I pull it out. I read it. You know, this was an older person. Spends more time uh, in that particular activity. And so he's getting his Bible reading done. Life-changing stuff, folks. Okay? Because you've got to make it easy to do right in your life and make it difficult to do wrong. This is the way to succeed. Get a habit, whether it's listening to it in the car 
whether it's reading it first thing when you wake up, just have it by the bedside. You just wake up first thing, grab a Bible and read it and have some kind of a habit that says, you know, I read my Bible before I eat breakfast. I read my Bible before I brush my teeth. I read my Bible, you know, and just have it as the priority, the thing that has to happen first thing in the morning. Can't do it first thing in the morning? Stick it on the back of the toilet. Can't do it uh, any of those other times? Listen to it in the car. But for crying out loud, get a habit of reading the Bible every single day. And you want to know what's wrong with Christianity today? Is that Christians don't read their Bible. You want to know why these liberal churches are just filled with people who don't have a clue about what doctrine is, don't have a clue what God actually is like or what God actually expects. Why? Because they're not reading the Bible themselves. They come to church and they get a very censored, edited version of who God is, whatever the pastor wants to give them in his 20-minute sweetness and light sermon. They're not getting the whole picture. They're not getting everything. The only way to get everything is to read it yourself. Even I'm not going to give you everything, although I'm trying. You got to read it yourself to get everything. And so reading the Bible is so crucial. One of the biggest problems in Christianity today is that Christians have not read the Bible cover to cover. They don't know what it says. It's not, the problem isn't that they're listening to it instead of reading it. The problem is that they're doing neither. They don't know the material. They're not letting God speak to them on a daily basis. But talk radio speaks to them. Hollywood speaks to them. Madison Avenue speaks to them. They're not letting God speak to them on a daily basis through his word. Don't be that guy. Let God speak to you. Get a daily habit of reading the Bible. The Bible says in chapter 9, verse 23 there in Luke, it says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Deny self daily and take up the cross and follow Jesus. Look at Luke chapter 11, verse 3 while you're there in Luke. Chapter 11, verse 3 says this, Give us day by day our daily bread. And again, this is referring to physical food, but spiritually it could be applied to the word of God. Job said, I've esteemed the words of thy mouth more than my necessary food. And so part of that daily bread is our daily dose of the word of God because man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God does man live. And so we want to every day deny self, take up the cross and follow Jesus. And one of the ways that we do that is by daily reading our Bible. You might want to be listening to music or listening to political talk radio or brain dead morning talk radio shows. Shut that stuff off. Deny the flesh's appetite for that stuff. And instead, get that Bible reading done. Get it in. Don't skip it. And you know what? It's so easy compared to so many other things in the Christian life. When you think about the fact that we have this whole day, we're, we're probably awake about 16 hours a day. Can you read the Bible for 15 minutes? Oh, you don't know how busy I am. Really? You don't have 15 minutes? Because if you read the Bible for 15 minutes a day, you'll pretty much read the entire Bible in a year. So if you've been saved for a year, you should have read the Bible cover to cover. If you haven't, what's wrong? You didn't spend the 15 minutes. What? I mean, it's not that you don't have the time. It's that you're not denying self. You're letting self and his cravings cause you to binge watch this and listen to this and do this and hang out on social media at this time and talk on the phone and do all these other things. And I'm not saying that those are all necessarily bad things, but you got to seek first the kingdom of God and you got to carve out that time for the Bible reading. Make it happen Make it a priority. It's important. You don't have to turn there, but in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 33, it says, Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. The Bible says that we need to watch daily at the gates of wisdom. Daily ready to receive truth from the Bible every single day.